Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today's topic is about fracture conductivity and Specifically, is there a way that we can look at a well's performance to determine if we're losing pressure and production due to the low fracture conductivity? And if so, how can we investigate what is it about that well's completion that we applied that's causing the low fracture conductivity? Did you know you can do all this in Harmony Enterprise? Let's check it out. Now first, for anyone unfamiliar, RTA or rate transient analysis is what we're going to be using here and it requires data that you already have. It's your daily production history, your daily volumes and your surface flowing pressures. RTA lets you interpret this data to learn what is driving the performance of your well. Now one of the standard analysis steps for an unconventional well is the square root time plot. In this case we have it on material balance time and the data points are our flowing pressure for the well normalized by the well's rates. When we interpret our well, one thing we're really looking for is the slope of the line like this. This will tell us about the well's productivity. The other thing we really care about is the y-intercept. This tells us about the apparent skin or the fracture conductivity. On one extreme, if we go through the origin here, we have a very good fracture conductivity. But in comparison, if our data goes higher on this y-intercept, it means we might have a problem with our fracture conductivity limiting our well's potential. Now to give you a sense of scale, infinite conductivity is something we would consider maybe over a value of 500 here. But once we start to get below 500, we can start to see we're going to be having some problems and I'll talk about what that can mean. Now just for a little more background, what are some reasons for this apparent low fracture conductivity that we observe with this type of interpretation? Well, it could be because we do not have uh, infinite conductivity in the fractures. We're lose, having some sort of pressure loss. Uh, another is uh, just a uh, skin on the fracture face could be causing this. Another is this convergence skin as the fluids kind of merge into the wellbore and fractures. Another could be turbulence. Uh, another is fines migration if we're having particles moving and collecting near the wellbore, near the fractures, a phase trapping, and liquid loading. So ultimately all these things have something in common. It's a apparent pressure loss. But the first thing we need to do is to identify if our well is actually experiencing it. And that's what this technique is for. So for this well that has very good fracture conductivity, we can always move into the reservoir model to do a history match of the production data. And we see we have a great history match and we can tune our FCD. In this case it's practically infinite. But the question I want to ask myself is what would this well have produced if it had a poor fracture conductivity? So to take a prediction of that all we need to do is say well what if it had a fracture conductivity of 5? We can see instead of the actual rate that the well produced at it would have produced this much lower rate here. So we can kind of see what we would have been losing on hadn't we had a poor fracture conductivity of this well. Now on the other end of the spectrum this is a different well and when we do this interpretation we see the y-axis does not go through the origin anymore. It's higher. So this is a well that has some apparently uh, poor fracture conductivity only about a value of 10. And when we go into our history match, our reservoir model, we see we get a reasonable history match again with that low fracture conductivity but on a well like this what could this well have actually given us if we had high fracture conductivity? I'm going to put in infinite conductivity and this well instead of an initial rate of 10 million cubic feet per day we could have been upwards of 25 million cubic feet per day. So in this case the reservoir had a ton of potential. We had created a, a large fracture network area but in this case the FCD is really holding this well back. So let's ask ourselves how do we make decisions about the completion of the next well based on these observations? Well first let's look at the range of FCDs from these analyses. So I've got about 
30 some wells here I've already done my screw time analysis on and each well has a unique uh, fracture conductivity result coming back as low as 5 and up to basically infinite. The next thing I want to do is group these wells into what I might call good fracture conductivity versus bad fracture conductivity. So then you look at how were the wells with good conductivity completed? What type of propent was used? What was the soak time applied? How much water was injected? And from there, you start to identify what common completion variables create a well with good versus poor fracture conductivity. That means the next well you're planning to complete, you can design the completion based on wells that you've seen that have good fracture conductivity. We can also look on our bubble map and see the range of our fracture conductivity and more easily pick wells, identify wells that have good fracture conductivity and figure out what it is about the way I completed that well. Now one of the last things I want to highlight is what impact can our fracture conductivity have on our cash flow. So I basically made a hypothetical, well I've got my permeability, my lateral length 5300 feet and in this case I've put very high conductivity. Uh, I've done the same exact same reservoir model, but all I've changed is I've lowered the fracture conductivity down to five and done a forecast. So when we compare these two forecasts, we see some interesting things. In the forecast where we have very high fracture conductivity, our initial rate is 22 million cubic feet per day. In comparison, the exact same well, but with a low fracture conductivity, starts at only 10 million cubic feet per day. The other neat thing to see is after 12 months of QM, our low fracture conductivity well has cumed 1.6 BCF and the high FCD well has cumed 2 BCF. So about 400 million cubic feet in difference simply because of the fracture conductivity. Now converting this into a cash flow forecast, we see that we may have the identical initial cost to drill and complete the well, but with the time value of money and getting that early recovery with good conductivity, we see that the high conductivity well will pay out in 13 months and the low conductivity well will require 25 months before it's paid out. So just an example of the importance of good conductivity. Now I've got two final tips if you're looking at fracture conductivity and one of them has to do when you're doing a history match is the texture or quality of the match. And just to illustrate that, this I would call this a reasonable history match with my flowing pressure. And this is actually using a very high fracture conductivity. In comparison, it, we can get the same history match but using a low fracture conductivity. And one of the differences I see here is what I call the texture or character. So with the high fracture conductivity we see a relatively smooth history match and with the low fracture conductivity in brown we see more character. It's, it's a bit more sensitive and this is something that's quite typical and this can help you kind of match the the data a little bit better and it's a good clue that you need a low FCD with your model. Now the last tip is a lot of people will use a uh, half slope to look for linear flow and I really like that technique. Uh, the only problem is when you introduce an apparent skin or fracture conductivity problem, it can really skew the half slope. So just to highlight that, we're using the Wattenberger type curve which is really designed about linear flow and looking for half slopes. And when we have infinite conductivity, indeed we get a half slope with our linear flow. Eventually we'll see apparent boundary dominated flow. But what about when we start to have a pressure loss within the fractures or an apparent skin? So here's the same well but with an FCD of 50. We see we don't get a half slope anymore. An FCD of 10. An FCD of 5. So maybe you might imagine that you're, you're seeing bilinear flow or um, a dual porosity signal, something like that. But in fact this is simply linear flow plus a skin or an FCD applied. So all this means is we really re recommend using things like this, uh, these square root time plots because it can help you separate the linear flow that is actually happening from the apparent skin or FCD effect. But ultimately, what does this really mean for you? Well, the first thing is now you have a way to determine if your fracture conductivity is holding your well back. And um, completion engineers are often using RTA just for this purpose, right, to compare 
the variables that they've applied to their well to the completion and how that is impacting the fracture conductivity just using the production data. The second thing is when you're comparing wells that have good fracture conductivity against wells that have poor fracture conductivity, what is it about your completion choices that is causing that? And once you isolate that, you can make a better choice about completing the next well to make sure you get good fracture conductivity and a sooner payout. And that's it. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, definitely give me a call or email me and be sure to subscribe or follow to be notified of next week's Did You Know episode.